I'm shopping on this kiosk here looking for computer stuff to get some presents for some hacker friends of mine. Trouble is, there's so many interesting things here, I'm really not sure what to buy. You having the same problem? If so, then this is your day, because we're going to bring together our group of resident Computer Chronicles experts to find out what their picks are for the best high-tech toys of the year, as we bring you our annual Consumer's Buying Guide show on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, personal computer division. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Shafe, and with me today is Paul Schindler, Northern California Bureau Editor for Windows Magazine. Paul, we've got lots of neat toys to look at today. Let's start off with this thing. All right, Stuart, this is one way of getting at a service called Radio Mail. Now, that's $89 a month for unlimited incoming and outgoing electronic mail. And the key is this Mobidem portable cellular modem. That's $800 from GE Ericsson. This is the smallest unit you can hook it to to get email. This is an HP 95LX. Mm -hmm. But this same modem will hook to the serial port of any portable computer. You can get your electronic mail anywhere, anytime, on a boat, on a plane, in a car. Uh, it's, it's the neatest way to get electronic mail no phones, wireless email. Pretty cool. All right, if we're talking about mobile computing, I always use my notebook over here, right? You never have enough room on your hard drive, no matter how big your hard drive is. This is the solution, a portable, in fact, pocketable, little portable hard drive, runs on four rechargeable batteries. Uh, this is an 80 megabyte one for about 400 bucks. You can get up to 200 megabytes in this little thing. Just plugs right into your parallel port. Takes me about 30 seconds to install it. There you go, take it home, all right. <laughs> Paul and I will be joined today by Tim Baharan and Gina Smith for a look at the neatest new computer goodies on the market. We'll look mainly at software and peripherals for IBM PC compatibles in the Macintosh, but there are people out there who don't use either a Mac or a PC. So we'll begin by checking out what's available for the other kinds of computers. Millions of people shop for software and add-ons that are not for the PC, not for the Mac, but for the Amiga. It's the platform of choice for many who work with video and computer-generated animation, but a popular gift for any Amiga user is games. The Amiga is the number two game machine in all of Europe. We get a lot of titles from the European uh, community, Amiga community. So there's a lot of arcade-type games like Hired Guns, uh, mainstream products like Kid Picks from Broderbund is available, SimLife, a lot of titles you recognize on other platforms are all available on the Amiga. Some of the best deals can be found in multimedia productivity and authoring tools for the Amiga. Scala Multimedia Software costs about $300 and lets you create professional looking presentations using all aspects of media. We can take animations and graphics and backgrounds and texts and fonts and add wipes and flips and tumbles and transitions to them. We can add music, uh, backgrounds and voice overlays and control how those work together. Um, put them all together into a real dynamic presentation. Movie Maker is a non-linear desktop video and audio editing package that lets you combine full motion video off your hard drive with computer animation. The resulting movie can then be transferred to videotape. Movie Maker costs $900 and runs on the Amiga 3000 and 4000 models. It also needs a very fast SCSI disk controller and a SCSI hard drive. Um, it can animate through native Amiga display modes or it can use DCTV from Digital Creations. Um, and that's really about it. It's a, primarily a software-based system, so there's no expensive hardware add-ons that are required. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson. We have all our guest experts gathered here in the studio right now to show us some neat Macintosh products, including again Paul Schindler of Windows Magazine, 
Tim Baharan of Creative Strategies, and Gina Smith of Electronic Entertainment Magazine. Paul, let's start with you, and what do you have for the Mac? Uh, a bunch of Mac stuff. wanted to just mention Richard Dalton of Keep Track gave me a hand picking this software out. And the first one I have is the new Grolier Multimedia Encyclopedia from, Empedia, Encyclopedia from Grolier Electronic Publishing in Stamford, mm -hmm. Connecticut. It's $400. And the 1994 edition adds animated maps. The first is a seed on December 20th, 1860. Mississippi, Florida. It's Colorado, a combination of sound and color in maps to demonstrate historical movements. This is the Civil War. They have another one that uh, shows the westward expansion in the United States. Signed articles, bibliographies. It's the finest CD-ROM encyclopedia, and I don't see any reason that anybody should use a paper encyclopedia yeah. anymore. All right. All right, load your next toy, and I'm going to show something right now. This is a program called Color It from a company called Micro Frontier. It's image editing and a paint program for the Macintosh. It doesn't come in a very fancy box, and for a good reason. It is free, basically. It sells for 150 bucks normally. They are giving away 1 million copies of these during the rest of this year. So if you get in touch with Micro Frontier and you're one of the first million for about $8.5 shipping and handling, you can get painted a great color painting program for the Mac. What do you have next? I have Crystal Crazy, $50 from Cassidy and Green in Salinas, California, the worthy successor to Crystal Quest. Uh, it has many of the same elements. It has the little ship. It has crystals you can gather. It has the cool sound effects. That was uh, me dying. And what I want to do is get up here and show you the uh, second level because instead of just gathering uh, crystals, at the second level, you uh, smash objects into the wall. Sounds like uh, fun. Uh, it's, a, it's a terrific <laughs> game. It's always been a terrific game. It's good in color, and uh, I just uh, can't recommend this highly enough. Ooh. Yeah, you get, to, to get all get those hostilities out. Yeah, huh? knock that statue down there. <laughs> and if they don't hit the wall hard enough, they don't break. So that's Crystal Quest. All right, Crystal Crazy. Now, Crystal Crazy. Yeah. Uh, what do you now, got next? You're going to. Uh, I will play with something play while with you something show that. While I show this, this is $500. It's the sticker from the Roland Digital Group in uh, Irvine, California. And you see this now. What's a sticker? Unbelievable is what a sticker is. It makes vinyl signs. Now, I'm confidently told it would cost you $20 to have this vinyl <laughs> sign done. You, you put in raw vinyl into this device, you hook it to your Macintosh, you, you use some software, and you can do custom in any typeface you want. I did the Computer Chronicles. With a little more experience, the letters would have come out that's straight. Great. All right, one more thing. Uh, this is the Disney oh, screensaver, $50 from Berkeley Systems. You know, they say everything has been done in screensavers. This is incredible. They licensed the Disney characters. They grabbed the bitmaps from actual Disney animation, and uh, it's uh, Goofy hours of Goofy just steals your files, huh? <laughs> Goofy just grabs your folders and shoves them off your screen. Funniest thing I've ever seen. It's really cute. All right, Paul, thank you very much. I want to go over here and join Tim. And Tim, what do you have up on the Mac? Hi, Stuart. This is a new product from Microsoft called Creative Writer. And it's really a word processor for kids, but you wouldn't know it. What you do is you see they've got an idea workshop, project workshop, writing studio, and library. We're going to go up here to the idea workshop. And it brings us to uh, kind of it looks like a slot machine mm -hmm. in, in reality, but it's actually a uh, little device that we can. Uh, used to give us story ideas. And so it's going to bring up a bigger version of it. And we pull the, the fish down and it gives oh, us a cute. couple of things yeah. right. Until we get maybe the, the terminology we want to get the creative juices flowing. So this is the squirrel sprinted underneath a deserted island. Okay. may sound crazy, but we'll go over to a, uh, a, a sheet now where we can actually start playing with the sentence. And the sentence comes up and you already see mm -hmm. this squirrel and everything. So now we can start playing with it. We can actually take that and add mm. color to it. And uh, perhaps we could even make it bigger by hitting this. And then we can go to another segment and add a oh, click art mm. item of some type. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and add a giraffe and put him in here. And now you can see we've got this uh, kind of a crazy little story idea coming around. But it's a great little product. It's really cute. Absolutely. And I think that uh, parents will love to have this for kids to get them their creative juices flowing and learning about writing. Creative writer. Right. All right. While you load up your next thing, let me show one thing. Very similar to what you were talking about, Kids Studio, another creative program, a little more graphically oriented, less text oriented, from a company called Cyber Puppy Software. It's really neat for kids. As you can see, lots of pictures, lots of things for kids to play with and become creative, uh, similar to Creative Writer. What else do you have, Tim? This new product is, uh, is the newest version of SimCity. And SimCity has been something that's been really exciting. You can build your yeah, own cities neat. and try to figure it out. But they've got a new version called SimCity 2000. The future. Right. And we're loading up right now a, a new version of uh, one of the demo cities. This happens to be called Bob City. And uh, we're going to zoom in here real quick and take a good look at the bigger picture. 
And the idea behind this, of course, is to try to get as much of a city uh, built that is either making money or at least uh, doing well on its own. And so, first thing I might want to do is here's a building that uh, actually is uninhabited, and if it's uninhabited, it's, it's costing me money, so I'm going to blow it up. <laughs> Something I've always wanted right. to do. But then we can go on the other side and actually start building some new futuristic things. For example, uh, in SimCity 2000, we've got these beautiful new building ideas that are much more futuristic, and mm. we're going to happen to choose this, what they call the Forest Arco, take it over here and build it up. And as you can see, now we have a whole new version of uh, a much more futuristic world. SimCity 2000 is going to be available by the Christmas time. I don't know what it's going to be sold for, but it's going to be a nice product. Tim, thank you very much. Let's go over here to join Gina Smith. And Gina, what do you have on your Mac? Hi, Stuart. I have the most addicting thing you've ever seen in your life, and it's not even a game. All right, show me. Uh, this is a multimedia title. It's for PCs and Macs with CD-ROM drives. It's called Rock, Rap, and Roll. Mm -hmm. What this does is actually lets you mix your own music. It has hundreds of pre-recorded tracks in blues, rock, reggae, African, almost any kind of musical genre you can think of. This oh. is the blues screen. All right, show me. If you look, these along this line here are the tracks that we have to choose from. You can hear some of them here. There's like four to eight bars like that. Mm -hmm. We drag these in order to our songalizer. It doesn't have to be in any particular order. I'll do a one, three. So you're really composing your song by dragging these little riffs and putting them in sequence? Sure. You want like a turnaround right toward the end. Okay. And then you want to take it home. Okay, so this is your song in order. Then you can adjust what your lead instruments are. As you see here, it says a harp. Okay. That's it. Maybe we don't want two harps, so we'll change that to, say, how about a sax? Okay, sax two. Better? I like the sound of that. All right. All right, and here's the another harp. Uh, maybe we'll leave that one as it is. Okay. Uh, here are our vocalists. Our female vocalist. Oh, our male vocalist. Uh, down here is the key map, and if you look here, you can see what the various keys here. So if you so look, you can actually play along with your keyboard. You can do it. X is guitar, as you see from the screen. Uh huh. C, D, D. Okay. So now we can start our song. Oh, we want to adjust this too because the screen is a little grating on me. Okay. So we'll change that. How about to a whoa? Okay, sure. Whoa. Nice. Much nice better. Nice. Okay. So we start our song. Have a sax here. So you're playing this, right? This is it. We're playing everything. We're playing the voices here. How about a whoa? Too much. <laughs> it's pretty neat. All right. And that's about it. I want to show you one thing, Gina. If we can get out of this a second, let me sure, grab just the mouse for a second. Get over quick. I want to show you something. There's a little moral question involved in this, perhaps. Uh, see ya. Okay. Yeah. This is something new. It's over here. It's called the Game Cheater. Okay. And it's a little guy named Axis, and it actually lets you cheat on most of the computer games. Now, you know, and this is maybe not a right thing to do, but it's a lot of fun. You get frustrated playing these games, and you cannot get anywhere. These are all the games you can cheat on with Game Cheater. We see 4D Boxing, A Train, Beyond Dark Castle, Crystal Crazy. Paul was playing that before. We could have gotten him an extra ship or a smart bomb. Uh, a whole bunch of other games here. You want to cheat on Lemmings. And you can get all kinds of extra climbers and floaters and bombers, et cetera. Really neat game cheater. Uh, you can do better at Prince of Persia and all those other things. So a couple other things you wanted to show real quick. Uh, a couple other things really quick. What I have here is the fourth in the Living Books series from Broderbund. Mm -hmm. This is called The Tortoise and the Hare. It's an great? interactive yeah. ESOP. It's available. It's fantastic. Okay, it also more. comes with a storybook for your kids. And if you've always wanted to play Captain Kirk and pilot the Enterprise, you can. This is Star Trek 25th anniversary. It's from Mac Play. It's like a flight simulator, only instead of an airplane, you fly the Enterprise. the Enterprise. All right, Gina, thank you very much. Good Coming up time. next, a whole host of neat goodies for DOS and Windows, so don't go away. And we have our fearless threesome back here in the studio, this time to look at neat toys for the DOS and Windows world. And we're going to start off with Paul Schindler. And what do you have, Paul? Uh, well, first thing I've got is Twain's World. It's $40 from the Bureau of Electronic Publishing in Parsippany, New Jersey. And it's everything you ever wanted to know about Mark Twain, his life, and his writing. Okay. Uh, it's a multimedia product, as all the Bureau of Electronic Publishing products are. And for example, we have Tinkly Music and the only known video shot of Mark Twain by 
no less than Thomas Edison in 1909. And what we have is really dim gray video of Mark Twain, but you can actually see uh, what he looked like uh, when he uh, walked around. Uh, it's also got uh, full text of all his speeches and his uh, difficult to uh, find short stories. Uh, it's got video, it's got narration, and it's got pictures of all the characters in uh, all of his novels. So that that's really great. Twain's World on CD-ROM, by the way, for okay, While Windows. you load up your next thing, I want to show something neat over here. This is called Teddy's Big Day. Is this packaging for software? Okay, a little warm, fuzzy teddy bear. Look at this. Software for kids six months and older. To run this uh, program, you just have to keep on clicking on the mouse key. Very easy. Great for kids. Their first experience with a computer. Teddy's Big Day. It's a wonderful thing. What do you have? Speaking of kids software from a great kidswear software company called Davidson's in Torrance, California. This is $40, and it's called... Uh, KidCAD, which is a 3D CAD program for kids. Now we're going to switch over to the uh, city view and on this vacant lot here in the middle it's going to build a house. Once it's done that we can go to the design studio and we can add 3D objects. Uh, it helps to have a lot of computer power behind this. We're showing it on a 66 megahertz machine. This drawing is kind of slow if you're uh, on mm -hmm. a slower machine. My uh, 12 year old Marlo and my uh, 9 year old Ray really love this. You can add uh, dinosaurs and uh, very quickly I'll just show you that uh, if you want to erase that building you grab the squasher and these giant fists <laughs> come in and uh, destroy the building. Pretty now, a, I have one more uh, yeah, thing you I show to that show and I'm going to take over here a minute. Card Grabber is $400 from Pacific Crest Technologies in Newport Beach, California. Now, what this is, is it is a special purpose scanner that scans, you put a business card in here, it scans it, saves the optical image, and uses optical character recognition to pull the data out of the fields, turns them into ASCII, and allows you to put it into a database. It connects to the parallel port on your portable computer so it's it's light it's relatively inexpensive and if you're like me and you're compulsive about putting all of your business cards into your database it's going to save you about 10 million keystrokes a year i am really excited about this product card grabber from pacific crest and Technologies. and real quick i'm excited about this game this is called morph man it finally takes morphing and puts it into a game environment watch this stuff for a second It'll, this is sort of an automatic demo here what you do is you get into trouble if you're a person so you turn yourself into a snake and if you get into trouble as a snake you turn yourself into a tank or whatever it happens to be it's really cool let's just see one of the quick morphs that takes place right here let's see it's a, it, actually these little windows don't do much now but when you grab things these little windows light up with the things you grab and show me a morph come on we're running out of time here guys there he is and he becomes morph man and now he's going to morph into a jet plane because he wants to go fly Pretty cool, huh? Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to leave you and go over here to Tim Baharin, and maybe you can turn the sound down there, Paul. Tim, what are you going to show us? This is another interesting new product from a company called Visioneer in Palo Alto. It's a personal scanner called the Paper Max. And you might have a piece of paper on your desk right next to you that you want to bring in, and all of a sudden have it now in a digital form on your very desktop. Very fast. Very also. fast, very and nice a tiny device. tiny little scanner, yeah. Yeah, $500 just about to come out. And what makes it interesting is that now I have this new scan device and I can take a really good look at it. I can actually annotate it if I want and Very put clean, colors huh? on it uh -huh. or whatever, send it back. But more importantly, I can now take this and stack it with other things, other pieces of paper, mm -hmm. as well as with maybe a spreadsheet or something I want to send. Then I just drag it down to send the a whole printer, stack to the printer. Right, or a fax. Wow. Fax it out and immediately it's gone. It's a great little product. $500 just about to come out. Real quick, let me show you something. This is news of the past, a neat little software product out there. You know, you go into these gift card shops sure. and for seven or eight bucks, you have to spend money to get one of these little things. You know, what happened on the day of your kid's birthday? You can print all, all these things out. It has the history for the last hundred years. So find the day you want for somebody's birthday or anniversary, print out a little neat frame thing like that, and you got it. It's called news of the past, really a neat little toy. That's neat. What else? This is another interesting little product. It's from Air Communications Company in Sunnyvale, and it's actually what it looks like is just a, a regular cellular uh -huh. phone. But it's deceiving because it's actually got a regular RJ11 connection in here, so it can be a regular modem, mm -hmm. or it could actually be a full cellular modem. So I can just take this particular little device and plug it into this, plug this into my portable computer, and now I have a full, full wireless cellular modem, so I can now just, without any connections, connect to my MCI, Compu server, yeah. anything. So it's a cell phone with a modem built in. Right, cellular modem and a regular modem built in. That is really cool. Right. Okay. What now, else? This other thing is kind of interesting. In my pocket, I've got a full 16-bit stereo sound card, a full SCSI adapter card, and a 105 oh, come on. meg come on. hard drive. Absolutely. These first two cards are from a company called uh, New Media in Irvine, California. Uh -huh. This first one is a full SCSI adapter card. 
and I can stick this in any machine that has a PCMCA, connect it to the a SCSI adapter, and now have a CD-ROM or any other SCSI per peripheral. The other thing is interesting, it's a 16-bit stereo sound card wow. called Wave Jammer, also from New Media, that I can stick in, and then when I connect it to this particular device, mm -hmm. I can now put my speakers in it. Wow. Amazing. But perhaps this last one is the more amazing of all of them, in that this is a, a 105 meg hard drive, two platters, from MaxTor in San Jose, California. This will be out after the first of the year in a full Type 3 PCMCA format. Amazing. And it's amazing because it's two platters, and they tell me that within probably 18 months, they'll get as much as 400 megabytes on this little Incredible. device. Incredible. Tim, thank you very much. Let me go join Gina. And what are you playing with, Gina? Hi, Stuart. I've got something really neat, and it's something called Movie Select. It is absolutely ideal for the person who can never decide what to get at the video That's store. like me, right? Well, you've got 44,000 movies here listed, and like mm. a lot of CD-based movie guides, you can look at plot summaries. But this does something really unique. It will actually recommend movies based on your preferences of movies you've already seen. Um, here I'm up on the H's, and I can say that I really like The Highlander, uh -huh. which was a great movie. Uh, High Noon, mm -hmm. excellent Western. And let's say high anxiety. We hit the continue button. So it's sort of going to guess the characteristics of those movies and say, if you like those, you'll like these. Exactly. Here it's told me that I wow. should see true grit and glory and unforgiven. Okay. It also has something that's really very unusual, and that is it will do movie previews. Real clips? Real clips. Full motion video clips, and not those little tiny huh. jerky video clips either. Here we're going to look at a preview of the Coneheads. Mm -hmm. And we're going to hit play. And it should start here any second now. Mm. They have come now. from the cold that is really cool. Of space. Yes. Sir. Okay, maybe yeah. stop that and then show me what these little toys are you have here. Well, this is ideal for the young or teenage boy uh -huh. in your house. This is the ideal joystick for him. This is a full throttle joystick. It's called the FX2000. It's from Suncom. Oh, that is great. Uh, what's really unique about this is its V design. Yeah. If, if you don't understand that, ask a kid. It just means the fire buttons are on the mm -hmm. top and the trigger buttons in the front. That's cool. I also have, for the sports fan, a football mouse. This is also available in basketball and soccer ball versions. It came with this nifty little mouse pack. All right, if we were talking about kids, I have a couple things I want to show you. This is Turbo Touch 360. Usually you see this kind of input just for Nintendo games and Sega games. This is for a PC, oh, okay? Neat. So you get all the full control you might normally get in a, in a Nintendo controller. And also this is sort of touch sensitive thing, so you don't get what they call numb thumb from banging around forever. That's really cool, Turbo Touch 360. For little kids, for big kids, look at this input device. This is actually an input and an output device. If you're doing lots of video presentations, but you don't want to go back and look at the screen the whole time. You want to look at your audience. This is your controller, full mouse and keyboard, numeric keypad control, plus a little monitor over here. So you can not only see your presentation, pull up your notes, pull up a preview of what's, what, what's coming up on the screen. It's the video show presenter, a really great toy. If Not toy, it's a really great <laughs> tool if you really do lots of presentations. Anything else you want to tell me? I do. About? I have one other thing. It won't do anything for it. Numb thumb. But <laughs> it will help you fix up your house a lot. This is called the Home Survival Toolkit. It's from Books at Work. It will not only tell you, but it will show you how to solve common household problems, fixing the plum plumbing, repainting a room. CD-ROM again, so it's got video CD stuff CD-ROM, in it's beautiful. It's available also on floppy. Home Survival Toolkit. Yeah. Great. Gina, thank you very much. Thank that you. is our Consumer's Buying Guide show for this year. Stay tuned now for this week's Computer News on Random Access. In the random access file this week, the number of Windows users doubled this past year, bringing the total number to more than 50 million. Those figures were released at Spring Comdex along with a preview of Microsoft's new version of Windows, codenamed Chicago. Chicago will support Intel's plug-and-play architecture, and it will give users the ability to open and use several programs at once. IBM has introduced a new beta version of OS 2 called Warp. It'll include animated 3D graphics and more colors as part of the user interface. And IBM has signed a deal with Kodak to integrate photo CD technology into OS 2 2.1. By next year, there will be a new kind of modem on the market, the cable modem. Intel, Digital, and Zenith are all developing cable modems, which will let you plug your cable TV line into the back of your computer for faster, cheaper access to a number of services. And if you're looking for a new IBM PC, check out Radio Shack. Radio Shack will now carry IBM PS1 desktop systems and notebook computers in 500 of its stores, along with its private label line of Tandy computers. 
And a national clearinghouse has been set up to put computer experts in touch with schools and nonprofit organizations who need help with technology. The REACH hotline has been established by the REACH Awards Program, which recognizes computer clubs and user groups that perform exceptional volunteer service. The REACH hotline number is 414-735-4735. And everybody's a comedian at least some of the time, but if you think you have an exceptional high-tech sense of humor, the people putting on this year's Laptop Expo are looking for you. They are putting on a stand-up comedy contest with all proceeds from entry fees going to support pediatric AIDS. The comedy contest will take place June 14th in Los Angeles, and it's open to anybody who uses a computer. To enter, call 1-800-444-EXPO. That is it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, personal computer division. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated and information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a newsletter, call 1 800 799 4949 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use and information on the definitive guide to keeping your organization's software legal.